them, to which I'm going to return them back, and from which I'm going to resurrect it back again. So his soul will be taken back to that body. As soon as he land, that soul lands, it will go to the body. The person starts hearing the footsteps of the people as they are leaving him in the cemetery, in the grave. Two angels will come to him. Shadid al-intihar. They are stern angels. Some of the narration says black and blue, meaning they're black, black eyes and blue eyes. Usually sanihi. They'll make him to sit, stand, sit. He will sit. They will say to him, Marabuk, who's your Lord? He'll say Allah. Madinuk, what is your religion? He would say Islam. Who is that person who's being sent to you? He would say Rasulullah, the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They would say to him, What is your knowledge? He'd say, I read the book of Allah and I believed in it. Then they will start asking him again and again. And this is Akhiru Fitnatin Tu'radu ala al mumin. So the last fitna trial that the believer will be exposed to. And that is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would say, You thabbitu Allahu alladhina amanu bil qawli thabiti fil hayati dunya. Allah would affirm the believers with the affirmed statement that is la ilaha illallah. Muhammadur Rasulullah. My Lord is Allah. My religion is Islam. My prophet is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My knowledge is that I've read the Quran. Those are the four answers you're going to be keep repeating and keep repeating. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would reward you for that. And you will have a plenty of reward we're going to be talking about later on. Now we're going to stop here. We're going to go to the other scenario. That is for the corrupted Muslim and for the disbeliever. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, and verily, the disbeliever, the corrupted Muslim, if he's about to die and he's about to transfer himself, to, transfer, to be transferred to the hereafter, those angels will send, come down to him. The same angels, but with dark faces. And they are stern, they're not glowing like the ones before. And they have a special shroud from the hellfire, which is tough and rough. And then they're waiting the angel of death who will come and sit beside his head. And he would say, oh, you wicked evil doer, you wicked soul, come to the wrath of Allah, come to the anger of Allah. Then his soul will spread in his body, trying to run away. He would take it out exactly in the same way you take the thorn away from the wet wool. That means will be bursted, bursted veins and blood coming out. You will take it out. Imagine the pain that he's going to experience. Then, every, then at the moment that soul comes out, every angel in the heavens and every angel between heaven and earth, they will curse that person. And, and every angel will say, Oh Allah, don't let that evil soul to pass by my sight. Then he will take it. And then those angels would not leave it in his hand and twinkle of an eye. They will put it into that very tough and rough shrouding from the hellfire and a bad smell comes to it like a bad dead flesh and rotten stinky smell which is the worst you could find on the face of the earth and they ascend with the soul and as long as as many angels they pass by they would say who is this wicked old soul they say so and so the son of so and so with the worst of his names that he was known with it in this dunya until they reach to their first heaven, that is the worldly heaven. They will ask permission to pass. They will not give him permission to pass. And here the Prophet ﷺ recited the words of Allah, where he said, لا تفتح لهم أبواب السماء ولا يدخلون الجنة حتى يلج الجمل في سم الخياط. That is the heavens will not open for them. This heaven will not open for them. And they will not enter paradise until the camel goes through the eye of the needle. Can you imagine that? Can you have a camel going through the eye of the needle? This is a, this is a saying we say it for impossible. It's impossible for them to enter paradise. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he would say, Uktubu kitabahu fi sijin. That is, write the book of this person into sijin. What is sijin? The lowest of the lowest. The lowest of the earth. One of the interpretation of Mujahid, the interpretation as well of At-Tabari, he says, Sijin, the seventh earth. As look at seventh heaven, we've got the seventh earth. In the lowest of the lowest. There, write his book. Then he would say, return his soul to the earth from which I have created, to which I'm going to resurrect back again, and from which I'm going to do again. 
and then his soul will be dropped down from the heavens just like dropped to this exactly in the same way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the person who commits shirk that is he who disassociate or he associates anybody any partner any rival with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in shirk he's like had dropped down from the heavens so that birds would snatch him or the wind will take him away and put him in a very far deep valley. So his soul will come to his body. And as soon as the soul joins the body, he would hear the people in the graveyard leaving him. Two angels will come to him. They are Shadid al Intihar. They will, we'll talk about these two angels by the way. These two angels are called Munkar and Nakir. Munkar and Nakir, Munkar and Nakir means they are unknown. Munkar, you don't know his name. Nakir, you don't know his name. So Munkar and Nakir, you haven't seen these angels. They come to the person with a terrifying way. Even some of the scholars, he said that maybe Munkar and Nakir to the disbelievers, but inshallah, Mubashir wa Bashir for the believers. He's, the names of the angels are going to be Mubashir and Bashir, but we don't have any support from the book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ to say that. The two angels would ask him, as soon as they make him to sit, Who's your law? Uh, uh, I don't know. That's your religion. Uh, I don't know. What do you say about that man who's been sent to you? Uh, I don't know. They would say to him, Muhammad. Uh, I don't know. I've heard the people saying, but I don't know. And uh, then his journey would start. This is the punishment of the grave that we will be talking about in many minutes. Ibn Majah narrates from the authority of Abu Hurairah that the Prophet ﷺ, he said, when the person is about to die, the angel will come to him. If he's a righteous man, then the angel of death would say, Oh, you righteous soul, come out of this righteous body. Come out, praiseworthy. And have a glad tiding with the rest. Have a glad tiding with a good provision. Have a glad tiding with the Lord who is not angry from you. And he will be said to it all the way. And then he will be ascended to the heavens and the journey continues. As for the person who is a disbeliever, a corrupted Muslim, the angel of death will come to that person and he would say, oh, you wicked soul, come out, come out, blameworthy, come out and have a tidying of boiling fluid and all similar things until he will say to it everything and they'll come out and as soon as it comes out, all the angel will curse it. And like we have said as well, and it's God. Now that's the grave now. We are in the grave. The grave, where when the person goes to the grave and remembers the grave, his heart should shake and tremble. His tears should as well shed tears. For Uthman radiallahu anhu, every time he goes to the graveyard, one day he was seen standing by some beside a grave and he was weeping. Until he wetted his beard, he was said to him, if paradise and hellfire was mentioned, you don't cry. But you cry as soon as you come to the graveyard. He said, verily the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, the grave is the first step of the hereafter. If a person is saved from that step, then whatever comes after it is easier. And if the person is not saved from that first step, then whatever comes after it is harder. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, wallahi, I haven't seen more terrifying scene than the grave. The Messenger of Allah is saying that. I didn't see more terrifying scene than the grave. Look, the Prophet of Allah, he had seen hellfire. He had seen everything. He had never seen more terrifying place or scene except for the grave. And that is why when the person is in the grave and he passed the first stage, the first step, then that is why the believer, the slave who believed in Allah, he would, when he, see, he sees the blessings in his grave, he would say, Oh Allah, make the day of resurrection to take place. So I could go back to my family. I could talk to back over to my wealth. As for the disbeliever, because he did not pass the first stage and he knows what coming after is much harder, you say, Oh Lord, don't make the day of resurrection to take place. Because what is coming after is greater and harder. Dhulmatul Qabr, the darkness of the grave. One woman, she used to clean the masjid. She died and she died during the night. Companions buried her and they did not tell the Prophet. The Messenger of Allah on the next day, he sees that the woman, she's not there, she's not cleaning the masjid. He asks, he said, Messenger of Allah, she died last night and we hated to disturb you. So we buried her. 
So he asked some of the companions to take him to her grave. So he went to her grave 